Visit Scenic Roshar. You probably won't die. Hi internet, I'm Steve, and this is Raffo. Of all the planets in the Cosmere, nowhere is investiture more integral to the workings of the world than on Roshar. Most other planets simply manifest investiture in their magic systems, like Scadrial, Cell, or Nalthus. Some few have ecosystems or environments that are affected by investiture, like Threnody or Taldane. One planet has plant and animal life that has evolved to utilize investiture, first of the sun. But on Roshar, investiture has not only shaped the evolution of life there, but has also fundamentally altered the entire planet. Now, let's visit Scenic Roshar. First off, the planet itself. Once upon a time, there was no landmass, just probably one big ocean covering the entire surface of the planet. Then Adenalsium, remember him, decided he really liked fractals and made a continent out of one. I mean, fractals are cool and all, but... Oh. Okay, no, that's legit. Fractals are basically infinitely repeated patterns, where each piece of the pattern is made up of smaller versions of that same pattern. Roshar is specifically based on the Julia set, where each repetition is just a teensy tiny bit different from the others, which results in dramatic changes on the large scale. Even at this point in the history of the planet, massive storms circled the globe, which scoured the shiny new supercontinent down to bare rock. This single supercontinent in the southern hemisphere is the only major landmass on Roshar, about 40 million square kilometers, or 15 million square miles, which is basically Africa and Australia put together. And just like Australia, most everything on Roshar wants to murder you. Given that there's no plate tectonics, no earthquakes or volcanoes bringing new rock to the surface, the only thing keeping everything from eroding away is deposits of krem, a clay-like substance found in high storm rain that hardens into rock. This also is causing the continent to shift ever so slightly to the east as stone is eroded and krem is laid down. These high storms have existed for as long as we've known about the planet. They were happening before Adenalsium did any fit or bust it up. And in fact, if the lack of tectonics means a crunchy rather than a gooey center of the planet, the high storms may be what provides Roshar with a magnetosphere and protection from the solar wind. Thanks, Hurricane from Hell! Not only do these storms have wind speeds over a hundred miles per hour faster than anything we've seen on Earth, actually comparable to the wind speeds in the Great Red Spot on Jupiter, but they are also bursting with investiture, and they sweep across the planet every few days. Twice-weekly magic-filled superstorms have predictably, shaped life and existence on Roshar in foundational ways. As you tour the 26 different nations on Roshar, you'll see... Wait, 26? Game of Thrones has 7, Lord of the Rings has like 10, and this one world out of the 7 we know of in this universe has 26? Somebody's got an overactive imagination. Thank you, Brandon. Never stop. All the plant life across the entire continent has evolved with a myriad of different strategies for surviving these recurrent hurricanes. Recurricanes. Many of these adaptations seem aquatic in nature. Most varieties of plants, including grasses and chasm vines, are able to retract their stems and stalks away from movement, kind of like a sea anemone. Others, like the various varieties of shale bark, absorb then secrete minerals to form a rock-like outgrowth similar to coral. But technically, both coral and sea anemones are not plants at all but instead are oceanic animals. So does that mean that many, if not all, of the so-called plant life on Roshar is instead water-dwelling animals that have simply been transplanted from the ocean floor to the regularly flooded surface of the planet? Anyway, some plants, like prickle tack, actually use high storms to spread seeds to other areas. Others, like azimir drop deads, simply flop down and hunker through it. Because of the plant's need to survive high storms, and humanity's general desire to you know, eat things. The main grain-producing plant, the lavis polyp, or rock bud, protect their fleshy insides with a hard shell, which will open up after a high storm, releasing tendrils that will absorb water. There are other plants that survive simply by growing on the leeward side of boulders or hills where the winds are weaker, but even those are sorta ocean-flavored. Speaking of ocean-flavored, crabs. Lots and lots of weird, massive crabs. Many of the animals on Roshar are similarly aquatic in nature, with multiple sets of legs, a chitinous outer shell, and freaky mandible arm things. Many of these are analogous to creatures we're familiar with. Choles are like crab oxen, axehounds are like crab dogs, kremlings are like crab mice, and chasm fiends are basically crab dinosaurs. Oh, and saber-toothed crab tigers. And crab people. Hey, Roshar, you got crabs. Not all of the animals are crabby, however. You'll also see normal not-crab mice and rats, hogs, both wild and domesticated, minks, and sky eels. Five-foot-long eels that can fly. 
Most of these animals have evolved due to the influence of the investiture and other forces present in the high storms. One thing unique to Roshar, however, is a life form that is actually made up entirely of investiture. Spren. We know from romantic theory that everything, from people to buildings to sticks, has a body, mind, and spirit. Everything. If something exists for a long enough time in a certain state, it will think of itself as that thing. According to Brandon, The general fundamental rules that create spread are Cosmere White. Spren are pieces of investiture that because of human or other sapient creatures thinking about it or interacting with the power, the power starts to take on a life of its own. Develops personalities and comes alive, so to speak. And this can happen on any planet in the Cosmere with significant amount of free investiture. Because of the huge amounts of investiture inherent in the high storms on Roshar, that's been applied to more abstract concepts. Emotions like anger, joy, or fear. Untouchable things like light, laughter, and music. Physical phenomena like fire, rain, or wind. Even metaphysical ideas like life, creation, or honor have spren associated with them. As Yasna says, spren are those ideas, the ideas of collective human experience, somehow come alive. These spren are associated with and drawn to certain phenomena like sharks to blood or Kaladin to depression. There's debate in world of which causes which on certain situations. Do rot spren cause sickness or does sickness draw rot spren? Given that pain spren don't hurt and rain spren don't start rainstorms, I'm inclined to think the latter. One of the fascinating things about spren is that they don't necessarily live in isolation. As we've talked about before, it's possible for spiritual bonds to be formed between humans and splinters of investiture. The most dramatic example of that is with the Knight's Radiant, where the spren gets to enter the physical realm and the knight can fly. While it's theoretically possible for any spren to bond with a human, because of the ten orders of radiant, it's safe to assume that there are only ten types of spren that could grant surge binding. Though at this point, we don't know all of them. Honor spren for the Windrunners, High spren for the Skybreakers, Ash spren for the Dustbringers, Cultivation spren for Edge Dancers, the spren of the Truth Watchers, Cryptics or Lie spren for the Light Weavers, Ink spren with Else Callers, Light spren of the Will Shapers, some type of Stone Ward spren, and three specific spren for Bondsmiths, one of which is the Storm Father. However, humans aren't the only creature that can bond with spren. Consider the Great Shell, the Crab Dinosaur we mentioned earlier. Even with Roshar's higher octave oxygen content and decreased gravity, roughly 70% of Cosmere standard due to its smaller size, a chasm fiend should still collapse under its own weight, let alone one of the Taina Islands in the Reshi Sea. Chasm fiends have been seen with, and so have presumably bonded to, luck spren, which allows them to grow to such large sizes. These same spren are often seen around sky eels as well, so bonding to them must make possible some type of weightlessness. And it's not just the weird animals that can bond spren. The Alethi warhorses, Rishadium, likely are bonded to music spren, which can often be seen while they run, which grants their larger size, hardened hooves, and increased intellect. Spren are found all over Roshar, except for one place, Shinovar. Shinovar is the one nation on Roshar that's not ravaged by the high storms, because the misty mountains, sorry, the misted mountains shield the entire eastern edge of the country. These act as a massive windrunner, <coughs> skybreaker, <coughs> windbreaker, diverting the force and investiture in the high storms, leaving an Earth-like haven, the only place on Roshar with actual dirt, and what we would call normal plant and animal life. Grass that doesn't get scared and run away, different varieties of fruit such as strawberries or grapes, and it's the best place on Roshar where animals like horses and chickens can be safely raised domestically. Birds don't do well in regular gale force winds. Has Shinovar always been the weird normal place on a world where weird is the new normal? Did the whole continent once have soil, or was Shinovar created special. Here's my theory. Aiden Alcium first created the continent by raising landmass up from the ocean floor, bringing with it all the ocean life that was already there. This forced the existing plant and animal life to adapt not only to high storms, but also to live on land. That's why everything seems oceanic. Shinovar was likely created afterward as a place humanity could safely hang out. Thank you all for watching this video. Thank you as well to the Watercolor Naturalist and Botanica Zhu for their wonderful art. Check out more of their work in the links below. We're going to continue the exploration of investiture in the Cosmere in my next video. So drop a comment below and tell me which book or magic system is your favorite. If you haven't yet, hit subscribe so you're notified as soon as it's posted, and you can keep exploring the Cosmere by watching some of my other videos. If you want to learn more about why Shinovar is the way that it is, we won't get Zeth's flashbacks until book five, so 
You'll have to wait and find out. Come on, 2022!